Hello golf fans. It's week number, oh, it's week number I don't know what in lockdown, but it's long. It is seriously long. But there's a bright light on the horizon. And that bright light is video number seven for the Ryan Fenwick Golf Academy. So this week we're gonna have a pop at shoulder stability. Uh, I guess in particular, we're gonna be going after some scapular stability. Uh, so something that's kind of quite close to my heart. I think it's got an, an undervalued role in the golf swing. Um, and I've sort of put together a few exercises and some, some progressions uh, that you can go away and have a go at um, and sort of see how you get on with. So drawn on quite a wide variety of influences for this one. So um, some of the stuff comes from uh, rugby when I was doing some work there. Some of the stuff comes from a guy called Ben Ashworth who's quite a famous shoulder physio. Um, just doing some stuff with British judo and he's kind of worked across into other sports like football. Um, some of the stuff's from him. Um, some of the stuff even comes from a chap called Adam Meekins. So, um, wide variety of influences. Hopefully there's something in there that will kind of appeal to everybody. Um, and at least there'll be something that you can find that suits you. So similar with previous videos, do your best to look after your sort of spinal posture. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't arch or bend your back too much on a nice neutral position. Um, and then on top of that, there's a theme that runs through it is that the more often you're in sort of single limb support, so we've only got one hand on the ground as opposed to two, that's probably better for stability. So wherever possible, try and stay away from having both hands on the floor. I hope that comes across in the videos. Uh, some funkier stuff at the end, a few sort of quite high-end progressions, um, so there should be something to challenge everyone. Uh, yeah, enjoy. So I haven't told you to stay on one arm, I'm immediately gonna show you an exercise on two arms. And the reason that I'm doing that uh, and showing you this bog standard plank is because it is the basis for a lot of the shoulder stability exercises you're gonna see later in the video. And the reason for that is that it's a nice closed chain exercise. It's a position where the shoulder stabilizers naturally work very hard. Um, hopefully you can see that my hands are pointing forward so I've got quite a neutral rotation at the shoulder uh, and that's a bit more relevant when we come onto some of the side planks later on but it is a good starting position for shoulder stability. So if you've got that down our first single arm variant would be a side plank, uh, fairly straightforward just remember to look after that spinal position, try and stay as neutral as you can. So looking to get a little bit more dynamic with this one, just a single arm lift. Imagine you've got a tray of drinks on the top of your back and you're trying to stay nice and stable so that they don't fall off as you move each arm. So into a bit of a drag across in that tall press up position. The further you can reach underneath your body to grab that implement and the further you can place it away from your body, the better the exercise. The European Tour Performance Institute posted something similar to this on Twitter this week. And while you're up there, you might want to try a torso twist exercise. So this is a bit of a, a thread the needle where I am trying to rotate my torso on my hips. I'm trying to keep my hips relatively still, my pelvis nice and square, and then move my torso on that. So a bit like the X-Factor position in the golf swing, trying to get my torso to twist and rotate relative to my hips and pelvis. Oh, keeping that dynamic rotary theme going, we're going to go for a rolling side plank. So uh, as best you can, try and keep your forearms facing forward. So in parallel with your torso, uh, rather than sort of perpendicular to it, because that kind of better represents the position you're going to find at the top of the backswing, at the top of the follow through. It makes the exercise a little bit tougher, uh, but I think it's a little bit more specific if you can do that. Right, so this is the Gucci stuff. This is an exercise called a gecko, where much like the lizard, you should only really have one hand and one leg on the floor at the same time. And we're starting to tap in something called the anterior oblique sling now. So that's kind of like a diagonal line of muscles that works from your left foot up across your body, eventually into your right arm and your right fingertips, and will be the same on the other side. And it's an important structure if you want to try and create maximum club head speed. And we'll be getting all the muscles down each of those diagonal lines to work and keep adding speed to that club head. Inspired by the last dance documentary, one with the basketball theme, loads of good closed kinetic chain proprioceptive work on that left hand side, uh, nice proprioceptive work on the right as well, and if you get an unstable surface like the patio, so much the better, bounce all over the place. So you can progress that by moving the ball from your right hand to the left hand. Uh, it's definitely a bit more of a challenge and the idea is to keep the ball moving, don't let it stop. I'm more Big Bird than I am Larry Bird, so uh, I'm not sure I've made the best job of it, but it gives you an idea of how you can progress it, and the, sort of the faster you move the ball from left to right, the better the drill is. 
So taking the ball bouncing on the stage, we can go up against a wall and do an exercise called a Fabianski, or at least that's what Ben Ashworth called it. It's been around for a long time. Uh, the sort of the faster you move the ball, the more taps you can produce, uh, the better the exercise is. Everyone have a dominant hand, so on one side it's easier, and on the other side it's a, it's a little bit more tricky. Um, the further you can move it away from your body, the further you go to the side and up to the top again, uh, the better the exercise is, the more you challenge yourself. So having isolated quite a little bit, we're going to try now to finish with a couple of integrated moves. This is a lawnmower. Uh, great exercise for sort of creating power along the kinetic chain. You can really use the muscles of your right leg to start to initiate this action. And that's obviously key in terms of sequencing. That's kind of what we want on the golf course. It's going to give us that highest club head speed. And this one's nice because the left arm works quite hard and it finishes in a laterally rotated or sort of backward rotated posture. Uh, they're quite hard to find exercises that do that and they are very good for shoulder health. So where we've been doing some pulling with that kinetic chain, we'll level that up with a bit of pushing. Uh, I quite like this one for thoracic rotation. I find that really pushes me into that top and fully rotated backswing position. Uh, another great exercise for using that kinetic uh, chain, really starting to develop power from the floor, pushing hard into there to get across into those upward positions. Uh, nice little exercise, good for shoulder health.